Hello class, um, this is the video companion to the Blender cleanup tutorial we did today, Thursday, April 14th. I'm going to run through it very quickly um, just to show you kind of how we do things. So let's just jump right in. Hopefully you had a chance to read through the whole thing. So I'm just going to open up Blender, hit General. Um, we have three things that come up right away, a cube, a light source and a camera. We're not going to mess with the light source of the camera, so we can hide those things here. And we have a cube. Let's import that file that you hopefully downloaded off of Canvas. It's a GLB file. I'll go find it here. Where did I put it? It's in the downloads. Um, and we import it. We see right away that it's hiding behind something. We can look around using either the two finger gesture or right click and drag to look around this thing, take a few minutes to do that. You can also move this globe object here around. You'll see that in green, and excuse me, in red is X, in green the Y, and in blue is the Z, kind of matching RGB. We see our object highlighted in orange, but it's hidden clipping behind that cube. So let's zoom in. You can use the two finger gesture or I think the middle mouse to zoom. You can also use this to zoom and highlight that cube. And you can use the move to move it down. That's one way to move things. Let's uh, back up. The other way to move things is click on this and if you tap G, it'll um, set it to free move and then I just click again to drop it somewhere. The third way is to hit G and then if I just want, I know I just want to slide it back, let me drop that in, hit G and I hit Z, it'll only move along the z-axis and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lower it pretty far away. I'm sort of setting it aside. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, take my object here. I'm going to move it up. I want to delete this little um, piece here first. Our goal um, is to clean this up so that we have like a the statue bust of John Goucher ready to print. Okay, um, quickly you'll um, you'll notice that we're so we're going to delete this bit. You're going to delete this background bit here. And then if you zoom in right now, you can see just a little bit, and we'll see this more, that the back of the neck got messed up. We'll see that a little more closely momentarily. But I can't click on this and just delete this little chunk here. I need to go into a different view mode to do that. So um, make sure nothing is clicked. We're in layout mode, and let's go to modeling mode. It might highlight the object, and you can see kind of the, the point cloud on this mesh. Unclick all of that. We just want to click on this so we can highlight all of that and get this. If I try to delete it, it's not going to delete everything. And let me show you why by backing up. Again, highlight all of it. We're missing the things behind. So I can try to get at it from a few different views to pick up all of that. And that could work, but I delete it, get some of it. I highlight it again, delete it. And I can keep doing this a couple times to get all of it. That's one way to take care of this. The other way is this. Highlight all of this. Oops. Highlight all of this. And if you go to select, select linked, and linked, it'll highlight everything kind of connected to the points we've already highlighted. So now I can delete the whole that and the whole thing goes away. Great. Next, let's take our object again. I'm gonna go back to layout mode and just free move it. So it's centered around the, the origin again. Let's move this over. Okay, and now I'm just going to very quickly go through several passes of highlighting and deleting to um, to get rid of this whole thing. You can use shift click. So if I pull in all of these and I maybe want to look at it from the other angle, I can hold shift click to highlight more stuff and kind of come at it from a bunch of different angles, highlighting as much as I can of the, of the part we want to delete. It kind of goes like this. We're not going to get all of it, but we're going to get as much as we can. Okay, let's delete all that, and we get a lot. And we're left with this sort of mesh. I can try to select linked. Get a little more. That's good. Delete those. Try the same up here. Maybe here. Pick up this. Select, select linked, get a little more, delete those, that's good, and just kind of keep at it. Okay. 
Oops. That's too much. Go back. You want you want to get rid of all these floating parts, of course. Um, and you want to clean up that base as much as you can. You're not going to get it all, but you want to get as much as you can. We're actually going to take out a good bit of that base here. As much as I can, I also want to get rid of like floating bits like this. Too much. In class, this is what we spent the most amount of time for this lesson doing is just cleaning up this stuff. Yeah, let's say that's pretty good. We can go to the sculpting mode and kind of see what it looks like a little bit more. Let's go back to the layout mode. I'm going to take my model and move the back of the neck toward the origin. Now that we've cleaned this up, you can see clearly that the back of the neck got a little messed up in the scan because of its position. So we can go to sculpting and use that sculpting tool. The main tools I tend to use you can see a bunch of them here are Elastic Deform and then the Smooth tool. So I can use the Elastic Deform to kind of push the neck in, zoom in a bit on here, and push that neck in more. Keep changing perspectives to see how you're doing, but you can kind of bring that in and it looks pretty good. Um, probably went a little too crazy this time around. Yeah. And now we can try to smooth that out a little bit, just tapping it. And you can't over smooth it. You might end up tearing the model if you do. But you can kind of smooth things out. All right, kind of messed it up, but hopefully you get the idea. Let's elastic deform that pointy bit in. That's, oh no! Went too far and cut toward the toward the mesh. Didn't really realize that. Okay, I'm not. Um, let's elastic deform this a little more. But I think uh, I think we're nearly done here. Again, you kind of overdo it if you're not careful. Well, not perfect, but you get the idea. Hopefully. Hopefully you do better than I did. Now let's finish this up by um, reuniting with this to the base. Let's go to the layout mode. I'm going to move um, Goucher up by using G and Z to move it along that axis pretty close to the bottom. I'm going to go capture my box again, G and Z to bring it up. Um, and now this base is obviously too big, so let's scale it down. I can hit the scale button. You see these handles. I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to get it pretty small, actually. You can always adjust it more later. Pretty thin base. We just need a base to kind of hide these edges and give it a good, um, a good surface to print on. I'm going to move this up here and to kind of eat up a lot of that. One important thing is we want to make sure there's no holes. So you can see right around here there's a hole in the 3D model, so we're going to need to make sure it's high enough to hide all that stuff. And that's pretty good. Let's zoom out. And now I'm just going to take my model and um, move it around so it looks a little more centered on this base. Actually, um, maybe I'll shrink the base a little bit more. 
again, we want it to hide things and be stable enough, but not too crazy. So, yeah, I'm going to move you back a little bit. Okay, look around. All right, oh, um, let me make you a little bigger to hide that. Get poking out there. All right, next. Hopefully you saved it. You can save it as a Blender file, but we're just going to straight to exporting it as an STL. You see a bunch of options coming up. We're not going to mess with all of these, um, but I'm going to give it a name. Um, I'm going to call it uh, John Franklin Couch for five. It's the fifth time I've done this. Export the STL. Next. Let's go to Ultimaker Kira, and this will translate our STL file into instructions for a Creality Ender Pro. So that we see that setting there. We don't need to mess with these settings. They're pretty good. Make sure support and adhesion is turned on. We're going to open that file, John Franklin Goucher 5. Um, it's a little big. Let's scale it down. It's about half of that um, snap scaling. You can get this little statue, it's sitting on the bed. Note that this weird region here, um, don't need to do that. This weird region here is because of the overlap and the extraneous surfaces. We don't need to mess with that because we took care of it. There's no missing parts in this particular model, but there are extraneous surfaces, but we can just ignore those. Okay, you can look around, hit the slice button. And it'll turn this into the instructions for our 3D printer. I can hit the preview button just to see kind of how it prints, and you'll see the supports it's printing and kind of what it'll look like and the bridge and all that. But we really want to save it to disk, and it'll create a G code file. And that's about it. We load that onto an SD card, pop that into our machine, and print. All right, that is that. Good luck, everyone.